they came, then this was much different because he thought highly of an Imam Abu Hanifa, though he, they did not meet. Abu Hanifa died on the uh, year 150. Imam Shafi'i was born in the year 150. So they did not get to meet. But he thought highly of Al Imam Abu Hanifa because he, th he used to say that all people are children to Imam Abu Hanifa when it comes to fiqh, which means that he highly recognizes his level of intellect and knowledge. And when it comes to Imam Malik, who was so devote to Al Hadith, he also took part of that and combined it with Al Fiqh. So he took Fiqh from Abu Hanifa, he took Hadith from Imam Malik, combined both together and came with his school of thought. He used to think highly of Imam Malik, as stated earlier. And this is what gave his school of thought a blend. Now, a man who dies at the age of 54, no print houses, no uh, uh, electronic gadgets, had a photographic memory, had to travel from one area to the other in a month or two. This means that the time that he had spent writing and teaching and learning was so blessed beyond today's measurements. Now, Imam Shafi'i believed in the Quran, the Sunnah and Ijma' and he believed in the statements of the companion, yet he would also look into the companion's different opinions and select whatever was in accordance to the Quran, to the Sunnah, rather than just simply applying his reasoning. No, he would have to refer that back to the Quran and to the Sunnah and would use a lot the issue of analogy. So the, the, the issue of analogy is quite prominent, al qiyas is quite prominent in Imam Shafi'i's school of thought. He also did not like istihsan, and he said that whoever does istihsan, then he has legislated, and he used to be very harsh on people uh, uh, giving this. And if we look at Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, now, uh, by the way, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, before him, Imam Shafi'i, were both orphans and were raised by their moms. So imagine the great reward their mothers have now in paradise because of what they had done with their children, how they managed to take care of them financially and to tell them, devote your time to seeking knowledge. I will provide for you food, money, etc. Don't worry about anything else. And this is a very important point that mothers should pay attention to. Your role is not negligib uh, negligible. Your role is so important that it has, with the grace of Allah, the ability to make an imam or to break one. You can have your children becoming imams, influential people, who impact others in Islam in getting them closer to Allah. And you can make them artists, singers, rubbish people. This is in your hand. So you have to put a lot of sincerity into it, make a lot of dua and put effort. Nothing comes easy in life. Imam Ahmad ibn 